good evening and welcome to Thursday Night Revival. Yes. 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 Get ready for worship and I'm going to read Psalm 95. Let us shout praises to God. Raise the roof of the rock who saved us. Let us march into his presence singing praises. Lifting the rafters with our hymns. And why? Because God is the best. I came over all the gods. In the one hand he holds the deep caves. And in the other he grasps the high mountains. He... He made the ocean. He owns it. His hands sculpted the earth. So come, let us worship. Bow down before him. On your knees before God who made us. Oh yes, he is our God. So Lord, right now we pray, Lord, that we would seek your face here, Lord. That your name would be highly esteemed in this place, Jesus. That you would be our God. Um, you know, we talk a lot about in this place about revival. And uh, revival is kind of a, a, a word that is translated differently to pretend, depending on who you talk to. And uh, I heard actually Steve Gray, you know, talk a little bit about this from the School of Ministry. But, but I really think it applies here that, that revival, you know, um, in, in the context that we, we talk about, it, and I really love the pastors here and the direction and the direction that this church is going because, of, because we're hungry after revival. And revival really is, isn't a big fancy thing, and it's not, it's not something, you know, revival is, is just right all in here. You know, and, that's, and this whole, the whole Old Testament and the whole New Testament is, is basically stories on revival. Stories about people turning to God. Stories about people crying out to God. Stories of, of God coming and dwelling and working through his people. And that's, that's what we talk about. When we talk about revival, that's what we talk about. It's God dwelling with his people. People returning to the Lord. You know, and, and it's not, you know, some people when they hear revival, they think of, you know, different things. Crazy things, you know, just people shaking or loud music or tents, you know, out in the middle of the wilderness. But but revival simply is just is just people returning to God. And I really think that throughout the whole body of Christ, you know, I really think that that's the true desire of all of our hearts. You know, whether it's deep down inside, whether it's close to the surface, that's that's what's what's underneath. That's what's in each one of our hearts, and that's what unites us is just a desire for God. A lot of us are, you know, a lot of people aren't 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 quite united and aren't, don't quite have the same heart, but I really think if you dig deep down enough, you know, because God's promise and God's thoughts for all of his people are the same. God's desire for all of his people are the same, you know, so they might look like they have, you know, they're this way or that way, but really when you get to, when you get to the beneath of it, you know, God says, I, I see the foundations. I see what's beneath. I see what I can build on, you know, so I really believe that God is bringing us to that place. Um, a, a lot of things that in my life has changed in revival. I'm just going to start by talking a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I told you, just, I'm, not gonna, I'm not used to this preaching. I really think that God, maybe one of the reasons he chose me is because I'm, very, I'm not equipped <laughs> to do this. You know, I'm not equipped to speak or to share. Um, you know, I don't have the right education, and <laughs> but God chose me any, anyways, and I really, and uh, so thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And um, he, he's choosing all of us. And really, preaching is just one small part of the church, you know. But one thing, a lot of things have changed for my life. Being in revival and, and, uh, and experiencing God and feeling his heart and just focusing all, like trying to focus all of my attention on who he is and honoring him and living my life for him. You know, I started to see a lot of changes in my life. And especially if I look back a few years ago or even, even six, seven years ago when I was a teenager, you know, I just think back into my life and, and I look at the way I worship and I look at, you know, I'm, I, sometimes I raise my hands or I wave my hand. God, you're so glorious. You know, like I'm, like I'm waving a flag. And when I was 13, 14, 15 years old, I hated those people. <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> you know, that was, I, was, I watched, you know, because I was around church and I was around people worshiping God. And I, and I saw it on TV and I saw it on the internet and I, my mom was always involved in that. And it's praise God. But, but me as a teenager, you know, just watching that, I was like, you know, I, well, those people are crazy, you know. And now I find myself waving in the air in my arm, <laughs> praising and worshiping God. Another thing that I used to really hate when I was a teenager was speaking in tongues. 
And, uh, you know, even more so when I got, you know, involved in the world and, and sucked into to the, that seduction and just, you know, be, just gave myself over to the world because I thought it was fun and I thought that, you know, that it was, the, it was the right thing to do. It was the cool thing to do. It was the exciting thing to do. You know, and when I got in there, you know, hearing people pray and hearing people, especially pray in tongues, I was like, oh, like, what are they doing? Why do they have to do that, you know? And here I am today pr- praying in tongues. You know, this is who I've become. You know, everything that I used to hate <laughs> growing up, I, I have become. And that's amazing. I love it. You know, like, and, and really, when I, when I started to turn my life around, it was because of tragedy. It was because, like I said earlier, God brought me to the point, or I got to the point where I said, God, I, I give up. I can't do this anymore. My life crumbled beneath me. You know, ever since the first day I started going into the world, and I started going after the world, and, and, and following after the world, the world started to betray me. It started to betray me. You know, it didn't want the best for me. I want, I, I, I held it so high up, and I went after it, and, and, ever, and, and when, as soon as it had me, it started to betray me, and it started to take away all the things that I thought it would give me. And, um, and, and I followed after that, and then it, eventually, it, it Betray me to the point where I gave up and I turned to God. God opened up my eyes, and we were praying about that last night, that God would open up our eyes and open up the, these youth, youth across, across the nation's eyes, you know, who are, who are going after this thing that's going to betray them, you know. God opened their eyes like you opened my eyes. And uh, that's what we're praying about. But when I came, when I started coming back to God, um, it was, a lot of times it was, it was a sacrifice, you know. It was hard, you know, because I was so used to living this life for me and myself, that it was so hard to, to try and focus on God, to try and give God, you know, everything and, and go after him. But, you know, after you get into this a little bit and after you experience God and after you truly figure out what it means to be in the kingdom of God, those gr- what I thought was my greatest sacrifice, giving up my life, has turned into my greatest joy, you know? To give up my life for my king, oh, man, you know? Two years ago, I used to come into this place, and I used to stay. I remember one time in particular, I came in here, and I, and I worshiped God. And, uh, and I came in here, and I, and I was still I was still struggling with things. You know? So if you're here and you're struggling with things, that's, that's us. Okay? That's who I was, and, uh, and we're always changing. But I came in here I think, two years ago. I, think, I don't know what, how, how long it was, but I stood up here, and, uh, and I started to worship God. And I knew I should worship God, and I wanted to worship God, but it was such a struggle because I had parts of my life still in the world. And, uh, and I just remember that feeling, you know, just trying, 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 trying. But now, now, now that we're getting into this, now that we're coming together, now that God is changing our lives, now it's not like that anymore. You know, now when I come to church and now when I come towards God, all I have to do is be who I am. I just have to let go and be who I was created to be. You know, when we come to worship, it's, it's not a chore anymore, you know, to come to worship. It's not, it's not a sacrifice you know, it's, it's my greatest joy to come and to be with the people of God, to come to prayer. You know, it used to be hard coming to prayer. You know, a lot of, a lot of us, you know, like we used to, it used to be a battle, you know, but now it's like, man, if we, Nathan said, missing prayer, because he's been working, okay? He's been working in the fields, and he said, missing prayer is throwing off my whole, my whole life. <laughs> he told me today, that's what it is. That's what it feels like now, right? Now we're just being. Now we just have to be who we are, to be who, who God's created us to be. And um, so, yeah, when I, when I was asked to preach, um, I, was, I was in a dilemma because of the amazing thing that God's doing here. And it's really, it's, it's good. It's not, it's not a bad dilemma. It's a good thing, okay? And, uh, and so many things have been said through Josh's message, through Darcy's message, through Pastor Bob's message, through Pastor Terry's message. You know, like, if, if we really grab the hold of what, what's been preached from this pulpit, you know, if we really put into practice everything that's been said right from this spot, our lives would be completely different, It'd be completely changed. And uh, I just want to read one story from Joshua chapter 7. So if you want to put that on the screen, Kyla. This is sometimes, I just, it's, it, this is just a kind of a side note, but this is sometimes what I see. You know, like we come, we come to church and we pray and we cry out to God. And, uh, and we ask him to do things in our lives. And we ask him to heal our land. And we ask him to, to help us with our problems. We, and we seek after him. And sometimes that's the answer. Sometimes praying more and crying out more is the answer. Sometimes, as, as we read about here, sometimes this is the answer too. And uh, so I'll just read this. But the Israelites acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted things 
Achan, son of Car- Then this is when they were coming in to, to the promised land, conquering, um, conquering the land. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Avon, to the east of Bethel, and told them, Go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the people will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not weary, weary all the people, for only a few men are there. So about three thousand men went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai who killed about 36 of, 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there until evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Ah, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan River, Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and they will surround us and wipe out your, our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? The Lord said to Joshua, Stand up. (laughs) What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. And that's the story in Joshua. And, uh, and that's what I see a lot sometimes in my life. And, uh, you know, like there's so many different things, you know, to God. But, but we, we come and we cry out to God and we pray to God and God answers his prayer. He's been faithful in this place. He's been faithful in his, in when, we, when we ask God and we cry out to God and we, we seek after God, he responds. That's who he is. He responds to us. Um, but other times when things aren't working out and when we, think, when we see things not lining up in our lives and, we, and, and we've prayed and prayed and prayed and something's not happening, sometimes God is saying, why are you on your face? Why are you crying out? There's sin. There's sin in the camp. If you get rid of the sin... I will come with you. I cannot help you because you're breaking my covenant. But if you go, and then it goes on to say that they went and they, they, de- they dealt with Achan's sin. They got it out of the camp. They said, okay, now go. I am with you now. Go and conquer. Continue on your way. I am with you. You know, so that's, sometimes that's what we have to do. And, uh, and we will continue to cry out and we will continue to pray and we will continue to be on our faces towards God. And we will also continue to look when God says, okay, if what you're doing isn't working, if, who, if, if, you, if you find yourself you know, being conquered by your enemies, you know, get up, get, deal with the sin, deal with whatever you have to deal with, and I'll, and I'll be with you. you know, it's as simple as that, really. You know, it doesn't take very long. Um, it's, a, it's a simple thing. It's a quick thing. Uh, but that's sometimes um, what I see. Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We've heard so many different things, and Pastor Darcy, I just pulled so many things out of your sermon on Sunday, and I just, I keep going over them in my head, and I just, sometimes I feel like I should just repeat everything that he said. <laughs> you know, I'll repeat it over and over again, because those things are so life-changing, like so, so life-changing, you know, just um, some of those things, that we, we are salvation to this world. We are the salvation. God's church, God's people in unity, laying down their lives, dying to themselves, God is going to pour out through us to our community, to this, to this town and to this nation. And, uh, and I really love the story of Acts because it was working in Acts. You know? We can always look back to the book of Acts and we can look back to the believers there. We could see their unity. We could see their heart for each other. We could see their heart for God. And we could see them just operating and God moving and working through them without a hitch. You know, we could see that. And uh, that's what God wants to do here. That's what God wants to do today. That's what God wants to do. And that's, I believe that that's, that's where we're headed. 
That's where we're headed. That's what's going to happen. And, um, and in, uh, God, yeah, God wants to pour out, um, I, have, I have here, through his united church. Um, I'm going to read from Isaiah. I'm going to read one part, and this is kind of the direction that I want to go tonight. Um, but before I go there, I just want to share with you something that was said last night during prayer. And, um, and it was about unity. You know, I really feel that God is, is, is calling us to go into deeper unity, to come together more, to be a body more, because that's what he wants to do. He wants us to be in a position where he can use us and he can pour out through us. You know, and it's, 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 an, it's awesome to be in that place. You know, to be in this place, to be so unified with you guys, to be so unified and, and coming and worshiping together and, and hearing and knowing your hearts and hearing and, and hearing about what God is doing in your life. You know, it's, just, it's amazing to be in unity. You know, it's amazing to come together. But what was said, and, uh, and this, was, this was heavy. You know? I think me and Josh both wrote it down when it was said. Um, but, but what was said is, if we realized in the church, and this is not just in this church, but in every church, in, in the church of the body of Christ, if we realized, or even, okay, let's just bring it back. If we realized in this place, okay, that our unity or our disunity would result in someone's death, let's say tomorrow morning, Okay, tomorrow morning, if, 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 there's, if, if, if God came down and he said, okay, Assiniboia Apostolic Church, there's, there's a few, few of you, you know, parts of you, you, know, you guys need to come together and you need to be unified. If you don't do this, there's going to be a child or there's going to be something happen tomorrow morning and there's going to be a child. You could, he can even give you his name. You know, whoever, <laughs> I could, Johnny <laughs> is going gonna, is gonna to die tomorrow morning. You know, if, if you guys don't pull together, become a body, come close, something's, this, this life is going to be lost tomorrow morning. You know, and if we, if we really heard that and we really, you know, heard that from God, if we really believed that, we'd be like, yeah, come, okay, okay, it's time. You know, um, you know we're going to stay up all night, whatever it's going to take, because we know this kid, we know this kid, we know that face, we know, we know what, what's at stake. Okay, we're going we're gonna to get this right. You know, we're not going to let this happen because a life is at stake, you know. But the reality is that lives are at stake, you know? And, and, and a lot of times we don't see that. A lot of times we don't see um, um, what's at stake with, with what, what we're holding back as the church by not being unified, by allowing these little things to come between us sometimes, you know? And I'm not saying, you know, this church, or I'm, I'm, I'm saying the, the bigger picture, the church. When God sees the church, he sees everyone. He sees all of his people, you know? And what we're holding back, if we could really just grasp a hold of, of what, what we're stopping from happening, you know, by, by these little things and these little, these little um, disagreements and people not seeing eye to eye. Like, it's so easy for us sometimes, you know, to disagree with someone and be like, oh, you know, he doesn't know anything. And, you know, I'll just do it my way. I'll do it, I'll do it the way that I was taught. I'll do it the way that I grew up doing. I'll do it the way that's comfortable to me. And he can go and do that, that his way, you know, just frustrated and, you know. But if we really realized and what God wanted to do through us as a people united. We would look past those things, you know, that we, that we get worked up over, that we, do, that we don't see eye to eye on. We'll say, okay, I know I disagree with you. And I know that, that what I believe or what I say, you know, seems to contradict what you say. But for their sake, we have to, we have to find something We've got to work this out. We've got to come together because there are lives at stake. There are people dying. And we need, to get, we need to get this right, you know? And I really think that that's coming. You know, through the, when I hear the word being preached and when I hear the prayers going up in this place and when I hear the hearts of people going out, I really sense that God is bringing that, that awakening, bringing that realization, bringing that revelation of what's at stake, what's really at stake. You know, a lot of times we look around and... Uh, Sometimes our lives are going pretty good, but sometimes tragedy hits, you know, or sometimes, you know, people are struggling with different things, and that's when it really, it really hits us. Oh, oh, there is, there is real needs in this town. You know, we might hear about, about a kid ending up in the hospital, or we might hear about something happening to a coworker at work and be like, oh, man, they really need help. They really need God to do something in their life, you know, but the reality is that's what's happening all the time. All the time there's needs. All the time there's people needing help from God. Needing something. Something. Not realizing, not knowing where to get it, not knowing where to go. God, just, you know. And when we connect more to God and when we get his heart, we realize that that's always on our minds. It's always there. 
And that's what drives us. You know, like a lot of times I, I, I see people struggling or I, I hear about stuff and that's what drives me. It, it, you know, it starts to drive me closer to God. It starts to drive me into prayer. It starts to drive me into, into helping other people because, because I see. I see the injustice. Uh, injustice, yes. And, uh, and that's what drives me. But that's, but that's when, when we get the bigger picture of who God is and, and what he wants to do through his church, that's, that revelation is always there. Paul said that I carry the burdens of the church of God. You know, he talks about what he, what he went through, what he's going through, you know, all this stuff. He's... he's, he's persecuted. He's, you know, getting, getting, um, you know, all these, the churches are fighting, you know, they're blaming him. They're saying, you know, oh, he's just this way in his letters. And when he comes, you know, he's just this other way. And he says, you know, I go through all this. And on top of that, I carry the burden of all the churches around on my shoulders. I carry this burden. And I really think that that's, that's what God, God carries that burden. And God wants to help, or we, we want to carry that burden as well. And as, I, and as I come into this church and as I experience God and as I read about God and as I draw closer to him, I really, really start to feel that I want to share that burden too. You know, um, in prayer a few, a few weeks ago, I, 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 felt, I felt the way that God feels for his people a little bit. And I got that revelation and I felt the weight of his heart for his people. And I said, God, the burden, the burden that you have for your people is so great, is so great. And, and, he, and um, I felt myself saying, I have big shoulders. I have wide shoulders. These shoulders can carry some of that. These shoulders can, can carry some, some of that burden, Lord. Just, just you know, the, I, I know, I know they might not look like anything to you, but like Darcy said, whatever, whatever we have, little or great, just, just give it to me. I want it, and I'll use it. You know, whatever, the, you know, however small these shoulders are, these, I'm pretty small, so these, you know, but they feel big sometimes, okay? <laughs> you know, and I want that burden. I want God's, God's burden in his heart to rest on my shoulders. You know, um, it says in the Bible, Jesus actually, when he's talking to the Pharisees, he says, um, actually, I think I'll just read it. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and lost one. Wouldn't you leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the lost one until you found it? When found, you can be sure you will put it across your shoulders, rejoicing. And when you got home, call in your friends and neighbors saying, celebrate with me, I found my lost sheep. Count on it. There's more joy in heaven over one sinner rescued life than over 99 good people in need, in no need of rescue. You know, I just get that picture of Jesus willing to leave the 99 worried, so worried about that one that left, the one that's missing, the one that's lost, that he's going to leave his 99 ones and go after that one. And that's the picture we see of who Jesus is. And that's the picture of his heart, you know, of who he is. And, and I really think that, and, and I'm guilty of this too, but I really feel and see, you know, that a lot of people, especially in the church, you know, are sometimes are satisfied. It's kind of the other way around, right? We have, they have 99 lost sheep, and they're satisfied with the one being there in their pen. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's flipped around. It's not, it's not Jesus' heart. You know, a lot of us, were satisfied. And this is, this is, and this is changing. You know, this is changing in my life. This is changing in our lives. I love babies in the service. I do. You, should, you, you can keep them in if you want. <laughs> life. It means life. Amen. And uh, we're going to have more, actually. We're gonna <laughs> I'm excited for that. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But you know, we, we can't, a lot of us, um, we, can't be, we can't be satisfied with the one sheep and, and not forget about the 99. We got to grab a hold of Jesus' heart. We have to feel what he feels and be willing to flip it, flip it around. And even though we have 99 perfect sheep here, blessed by God, blessed by the Lord, we have 99. That's probably 98 more than everyone else around us, you know, but still, still being willing to say no. There's one. There's one not here. There's one that's missing. There's one that needs to be here. He needs to be brought in. And that's Jesus' heart. And we get, when we get close to him, that becomes our heart. You know, we see, we see what God is doing. And, and, you know, I always see, you know, I look at this place and I, and I just see our lives. And I say, God, you are so good. You know, the sheep that you're bringing back, you know, and at the same time, but no, there's more. You know, there's, there's, there's people, there's people who are struggling. There's people who are missing, you know, God. And, and, I'm, and I'm thankful for the 99, but, but we're going to go after that one if there's one that's left. And I thank you, Lord. 
um, for, for giving us that burden and, and, laying, and giving us that heart, giving us your heart. Yes. And, um, and I really see that that burden that I'm asking God for, that burden, I'll carry it on my shoulders. You know, how, how does a shepherd carry the sheep back? He carries it on his shoulders. You know, so what God is saying, what I'm, you know, what God is saying when he's saying, I want to give you these burdens, it's not just to crush you under the weight of this feeling. You know, I want you to bring back my sheep. That's the burden. That's what the burden is. Bring back my sheep, you know. And that's what we're doing. A lot of, a lot of us, you know, you know, people and, you know, experience, sometimes we experience a burden. And God, why? Why this burden? Why this burden? Why this weight? Because you're bringing back the sheep. You're bringing back the lost sheep. That's why you feel that way. That's why it's so heavy. You know, maybe you're carrying three of them on your bed. <laughs> Whatever it is, that's, that's what I want. And um, I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 58. 5 to 12. I'm not going to read it in my Bible because it's a different translation. I'll read from it from the screen again. Pastor Darcy um, said this verse, but I just want to focus on one part of it because it, it really stood out to me, and I really believe that that's what God put on my heart for tonight, for this night, for this moment. And, uh, okay, and this is going to be the last part of it. So, Is this the kind of fast that I have chosen? Only for a day to, for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I've chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. I love that part. Then your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and the malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. And this is what I want to focus on tonight. And this is what I really believe that God, God is saying God wants to do in this place tonight with his people. And uh, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and you will rise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Isn't that who God is? Isn't that who God is? Restorer, redeemer. It says that he has given us the ministry of reconciliation bringing people back to God, reconciling the world to God. And I really feel that this, that this is what we're called to do. Preparer, you, you will be called repairer of broken walls. And I love that, that King James um, um, translation where it says, the repairer of the breach, of the breach. You know, the wall, the wall of a city represents safety. It represents security. It represents strength. It represents you know, keeping out the enemies. So if there's a breach in our wall, if there's a breach in our, in, our, in our security, then we're vulnerable. We're vulnerable to attack. And that's what I see when I look at the church today. It's like Nehemiah when he saw, looked at Jerusalem and its walls were lay in, in rubble, laying in rubble. There was no security. There was no safety. The, there was no houses. Actually, the houses were desolate. The, the, the temple of God was, was, was wrecked. And, uh, and that's, that's a lot of times when I look at the church today, I see that. I see, and I don't see, I don't see the whole wall torn down. You know, I don't see, because a lot of times when I, when I speak about the church, you know, sometimes, and it used to be the, the case where I, and especially before I came to this place, I was pretty hard on the church. <laughs> you know, I grew up in it and, uh, you know, I, you know I, I've been through it and it, things didn't work out and, and, uh, and, you know, things didn't happen the way that I thought they should happen and, and I wasn't seeing a lot of this, you know, when I looked around me. And uh, so when I used to talk about the church, it, w- it was in a certain tone and it was in a certain way. But now when I talk about the church and even, even if it's something that's hard and even if it's something like this by saying when I look at the church, when God, when I look at your church, I see the wall with broken, with breaches, 
God. I see, I see holes in, in your wall around your people, God. And, and I don't say that to point the finger, and I don't say that to say that, that you know, it's, it's, it's that piece of the wall's fault, or, or it's, you know, it's anything like that. I, my heart just yearns for that wall to be together and to be complete, you know, for that safety to be there, for that protection to be there. And uh, so it's, it's, it's hard for me now to, you know, to say things against you because it's God's church. It's his church. And, and, and his callings on, on every one of his people are the same yesterday, today. They'll be the same tomorrow. Even if they're not living in it, even if they're not walking in it, his desire for their life is always the same. His desire to leave all the 99 and go after that one is always the same. And that's his heart. And that's what's beginning, like, Oh, on, on Sunday, that's the heart that I saw from this pulpit. That's the heart that I'm beginning to see in this body of people that we're, that we're going to go on. We're no, no longer are we going to point the malicious finger. No longer are we going to go and talk about this like, like, it's, like it's not our, you know, that, like we're not a part of it because we are, right? And, and their failures and their weaknesses and their struggles are our struggles. You know, last night I went out. I'll just stop for a second, but last night I went out and I went for a walk and I put on worship music and I went and I started to pray. It was like midnight. <laughs> because, I, because I really believe, you know, like, God, you're doing such a work here. If I don't hear from you, <laughs> I, like, I need to hear from you, you know, like, oh man. So I went out for a walk and I just started to pray and I, and I started, and, you know, and I went to a church and I started to pray over that church. I started, of God, you know, like, and then he just started to show me, you know, like, like, you know, I just saw the foundations, you know, of what, of his desire for those people, every person in that place, what he desires for their life, the gifts that they have in, that they have in their lives that, that are going to make me complete, you know, yeah. that some of them are laying dormant. Some of them, they're, they're, they're forgotten about. Some of them, the world's gotten so much and then the whatever has gotten so much on them that, that what's going to, what completes me is sitting there buried in their life. And that's what God was showing me when I was praying for these churches. You know, and I was praying at the front and I saw the lights glaring down and then I went around to the back and just circling around it and just saying, God, move. God, do something. God, my, for my brothers, for, for, my, for your church, God, just, just move. And, uh, and when I got behind the church, you know, like you could see the sky and it's just, and the, the, the stars were so clear, so clear. You know, in the front, you couldn't see the stars because there's, you know, the lights and the signs and the, everything, you know, but God was just showing me that, that behind every, every building that, that calls it, you know, that's a church and every place where where people gather, you know, if you get behind it, if you get underneath of it, if you get, if you get past the, the sign on the door and the, and the years and the, and the things that were said and, and the arguments that were had, if you, get, if you get underneath that, if you get behind that, what's behind? It's so clear. It's so clear God's desire and his plan for his people. And that's what I saw and that's what I'm beginning to see. And um, so that's, it's, it's just amazing. But <laughs> I don't know what I was going with that. But um, I'll just keep going with this. Repair, repair of the breach, repair of the broken walls. Now, walls represent safety, and I just want to go to this for a second, but not necessarily does it represent peace. Okay? When I was, when I was uh, you know, 16, 15, 16 years old, when I started rebelling, and my mom can tell you all about this, and she saw it, and she was there, you know, and she tried to stop it, and she, she knew it was coming, and I didn't. <laughs> but when I went there, you know, I saw this world, and I was going after a world and, 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 and a lifestyle that I saw as dangerous. You know, it was dangerous, it was exciting, it was risky, and, uh, and that, 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 I was drawn to that. You know, a lot of people will look at, at teenagers these days, and they'll be like, you know, why, why are they, you know, why are they doing, don't they know that's dangerous? You know, driving, speeding down through town, or, or drunk driving, or going to parties, or doing these drugs, or whatever they're doing, you know, don't they know that's dangerous? Of course they know that's dangerous. That's why they're doing it. They live for danger. They want to experience it. They were born for it. That's where they're, that's where they're drawn to. And when I was six, 15, 16 years old, that's what I was drawn to too. But you know what? I didn't find it in the church, and I should have. I should have found danger in the church. Walls represent safety, but they do not necessarily represent peace. And the God, the, the church that I see in this Bible is dangerous. It's risky. There's, there's battles to be fought. There's, there's lives that are lost. There's, 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 there's looking, you know, there's, there's uncertainty and there's, there's fear and there's, there's, there's a spiritual war waging. And, and once we get involved in this and once we start to experience this, 
you know, this, I realized why I went to, why I went to what I went to. I actually, I want it, because I, because I, God, God has made me to be a fighter, to fight, to experience, to fight for other people, to fight for their lives, to see them under attack and to go and rescue them. That's who God is, has made me to be. So as a teenager, you know, I kind of see why teenagers go to this, you know, to, to this lifestyle, because they, they are made for it, and they don't find it in the church. But if they did, if they found danger in the church, if they found the fight and the battle of God re- really what it's meant to be, then they wouldn't go for those things, right? Because they, they would be experiencing what they were meant to do, what they were made to do. And um, so, yeah, there, I, I, see, I see many, many breaches um, in the wall. And if you, if you looked at a wall in, around a city, a lot of times in the ancient cities, they're huge, huge walls, you know? And if you're on one side of the wall, you wouldn't be able to see the other side of the wall. You know, you wouldn't be able to see it. And I see a lot of us standing on, on this big wall around the church. You know, it's all the same wall. It's the same church. It's the same people. And some are standing on places, you know, and it's, and it's, in, it's, 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 uh, it's intact, you know? It's, it's, it's together all the way to the top. You know, there's that little spot for archers to shoot through. And they're sitting there and they're looking out and they're saying, man, this, this wall is sturdy. You know, it's not going anywhere. This is good. And there's other people maybe even 10 feet around a bend and they're on another part of the wall and it's crumbled and maybe their leg is trapped underneath and they just feel, they see, you know, the, the armies, that there's nothing protecting them and they're falling under this wall and, and that's why I see a lot of, a lot of people, that's, that's, that's their own perspective and a lot of people in the church, depending on what part of the wall you're standing on, you have a different perspective of what God is doing and what God and what, what the wall really is, right? And uh, if we just take a step back for a second and look at the whole thing, we'll see that, that there's a lot, of, a lot of breaches. There's a lot of places where the enemy can freely come and go, you know? And, 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 and God is calling us to be what? Repairs of the broken wall. He said, you will be called repairs of the broken wall. And I really think that God's desire is for us to be that. I really think that God wants, to, wants us to repair those broken things, not so that we can live without peace, or, I mean, live with peace, necessarily. We want peace, and I believe that God does bring peace. But so that we can be protected, so that we can be strong, right? So that we can be together, so, we can, so that we can be the kingdom of God and not have breaches and not have weaknesses, but we can move forward. And we can, we can, we can move forward in what he wants us to do. And um, so, yeah, um, a lot of times, I don't know what those breaches could be. You know, a lot of times they're different things. Um, you probably have a long list of things of what, of what can be those breaches in the wall. And what you see and, and, you know, is, is probably, probably a lot of it's true. And what I see, a lot of it's true too. And, but I really believe God's calling us, right? He's calling us to be, be repairers of the wall. We can be repairers of the wall. We can start to rebuild that wall. What does it say? It says, can you put that back up on the screen there again, Kyla? That last, the very last part. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins, the ancient ruins, you know? The things that, that were always, that were, are ancient, they've always been there. You know, maybe, maybe they, didn't, they didn't last the, 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 the ages or the years, but they're there. The foundations are there, you know? It's, it's, it's the ancient ruins, you know, the verse that, that brought me here, really, um, was Jeremiah 6.16. It says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. That ancient path. God, and that, I said it again last night, I said, God, how, let's, let's just do it your way. Let's just do it your way, God. Let's do things your way. And, uh, and that's, what it's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what brought me to this place. It was a while ago, but that's, that's what got me set, set on this course. God, he told me, stand at the cross, was like, ask for the ancient paths. You know, not the newest thing or not what people have said it to be, but ask for the ancient past. You will rebuild the age, rise up. Ancient, we'll rebuild the ancient ruins, with it the ancient paths. And you will rise up the age-old foundations. And that's what I saw in these churches. That's what I see, you know, when I go. And I, I've prayed for, like, in the middle of the night, I've prayed for churches on Shaunavan. You know, for some reason, if I'm up for a prayer walk, I just, I find a church and I just put my hands on it. And I just say, God. And he shows me things. You know, like I've seen at the Alliance Church in Shaunavan, I see, I've seen this light come down, you know, through. And, and God's plan and his purpose for that church. I saw his desire of what he wants that church to be. You know, and then I open my eyes 
And I see that it's not there yet. <laughs> but my desire is, is it for that church to be what I saw God's, because that's, that's what's going to make this place, you know, that's, our, that's, that's the, the wall beside, of, beside us. You know, we can build up our wall and our little place of the city, and it could be perfect to the T, but if the churches beside us have breaches, then we're all, we're all weak. We're all weak. We're all have, we all have, have opportunity for the enemy to come in. Um, so yeah, I don't know what I was, go- I was going for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the age-old foundations. And that's what I saw last night praying for that church. Um, the foundations. God sees that foundations will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. So thank you, Lord. So I really think that that's what God's calling us to be, calling us to do. And even tonight, I believe that we can do some of this and we can rebuild a part of the wall. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to worry about the whole thing at this moment. You know, we don't have to, you know, stay here and say, well, we're not, you know, we're not going to leave this place until the whole wall. There may be a day when that happens and I'll be here. <laughs> but I really think that, that how a wall is built, it's one brick at a time. You know, one brick at a time. One more brick on top of another. One more piece of safety. One more part of it coming together. And, uh, and I really feel that, that God has a, has a part that he wants us to rebuild today. You know, whatever it is tomorrow, well, let's do that. Whatever it is today, let's do that. And uh, so, yeah, I, I entitled this message. <laughs> it's time to rebuild. It's time to rebuild the, those ancient walls. It's time to rebuild. Um, uh, yeah, that's, it's time to be what, who we're called to be. Yes. And um, so what I wanted to do, and I don't, I don't know if this makes sense or if this is going to work, but I really feel, you know, that, that, that the part that God is, is calling, is, has laid on my heart for us to rebuild has to do with, with the relationship between um, the leaders, the people, the people that, are, that God has called to lead his flock, the shepherds of God's people, the leaders, the pastors, the teachers, whatever it may be, those leaders, and to restore them with their people. You know? And I really believe that that's one place that, that, that has crumbled in, in our church, you know, is that, that we've had our leaders and, and the people you know, need, to be, need to be connected, need to be one. And that's something that led me here too, actually. Um, I'll just share really quick, and I'm almost done. Really quick, um, when I was in Bible school in Thailand, um, God led me there, and I was seeking after him, and it wasn't through the, the classes that, that I learned, and it wasn't through the teaching necessarily, and it wasn't through the ministry, and it wasn't, you know, it was, it was, it was through God's spirit. Meeting with God face to face is what changed me. And I had this desire that kept growing and growing and growing in me, and I, and I, and I could almost physically like l- yearn for it. It was, it was the desire for a mentorship. It was the desire for a spiritual father, for someone to, like, like Paul and Timothy, for someone to say to me, I am your father. Imitate me. Imitate me. I am your spirit.